All right, hello and welcome to the second video of Module 1. Uh, this video is about uh, the vocabulary and some of the core concepts you'll need to learn in the class. So let's dive right in here. Uh, first thing you need to think about is the vocabulary. In order to be considered a true networking professional, you have to master our vocabulary. That means if you're going to go and on a, be on an interview, they will ask you questions using this vocabulary and you will be expected to respond with this vocabulary. Now there's tons of things that are going to come up later and what's going to happen is you're just going to need to know, you know what it what that word, what that acronym means. So speaking of acronyms, there are lots and lots of three letter and some four letter acronyms in networking. And by the way, if you've ever heard of uh, TLA, uh, that stands for three letter acronym. Yeah, that was a good one, right? All right, so three letter acronyms, again, are very common. Some of them will be pronounced. You've already probably heard of LAN, which stands for Local Area Network. We don't say L-A-N, we just say LAN. And for example, if we're talking about quality of service, we say QOS, we don't say QOS. Um, there's some people that say voice over IP, VOIP, and some people say VOIP and I don't say VOIP. I like VOIP. So, you know, some of this ends up being preference. And again, you're, you're yeah, welcome to our world. You're going to have to talk like a networking professional. So a couple of more things you need to watch out for. There's sometimes some everyday words that are going to be used in kind of unusual ways. You already know the term spam, which is, of course, the can of meat, which has nothing to do with an unwanted email. You also know cloud. You know, it has nothing to do with the thing up in the sky. It has everything to do with uh, servers and other uh, resources available over a network. Uh, you also know probably about a cookie on your web browser, and it's not the same as a cookie you eat. So everyday words are, yeah, that's pretty, you know, we just change the meaning of them and use them in weird ways. The last thing is sometimes we'll make up our own words for things. So spyware, you probably never, never heard of it or never, it probably never even happened before, but we're totally used to that now. And we even have combinations of three letter acronyms and words that we use all the time too, like a MAC address, which sounds like, I don't know, I'm not a cool person with an address. Anyway, MAC address, we'll worry about that later, but all of these words you're gonna be using just commonly every day, and that's how I use them too. I'll explain a word and I'll define it. This is an introductory class, but once you've, once I've done that once, I'm just gonna start using it. You will learn this vocabulary as you go. So take notes and rock and roll. All right, so core network concepts. First thing before we get ready is to sort of prepare yourselves for what we're gonna be dealing with out there. When we're talking to users, users only care about how their application works. So if a user is browsing the web and suddenly they are unable to browse the web and they say, hey, the internet's down, that's because the user doesn't think about all of the plumbing that goes on in between it. It's just like you, <clears throat> You know, if you went into the bathroom and turned on the faucet and no water comes out, that you don't have any idea where it went wrong and you need to call a plumber. Well, welcome to being the plumber for our users. So users, when they're using their applications, they make certain assumptions about how things are going to work. You know, if they click here, it's going to achieve such and such result. It's just the same way, just by the way, this is kind of a weird thing to think about, but right now, if you think about it, speaking of plumbing, if I walk into the restroom here and I want to wash my hands and I need some warm water, which handle do I reach for? Now you probably don't think about it when you're actually doing it, but right now you can, right? You know, it's that right handle. And the next question is, what direction does the handle turn? Are you going to turn it counterclockwise or clockwise to get it to turn on? Again, you are thinking about it right now. But normally, you, we, don't, we can't expect users to always be thinking about it, and they won't. When something goes wrong, they're going to call us. We're the plumbers. So here we go. And some of this will be going into the slides, and this is one of those places. So when we're talking about a network, a network interconnects many, many, many devices. Okay, It's not just a few little things. There's a lot of different things going on inside a network. 
And believe me, in the rest of the class, we're going to talk about this in super, super, super great detail. But now we got just a few to talk about. First up, a host. A host is a general purpose computing device that is attached to a network. So if we're talking about a host, we mean things like uh, your personal computer on your desktop, your laptop that you carry around, the server that you're connecting to, and your smartphone. All of those are considered hosts. We generically divide hosts into two categories sometimes. Sometimes we say a client is something that requests data and or a service, and a server provides data and or a service. But I want you to remember from this and now on that a host is general purpose, meaning a host can act as either a client or a server. Even though for the most part, for example, your desktop is most likely acting as a client, there are situations where your desktop can act as a server. So a host is just the generic term for any device, general purpose computing device, attached to a network. Running on the host is an application. So applications are very important to us. That again is any program. This is a program running on a host that can be reached over a network. Now we also divide applications into client and server also. So there is a client application sometimes, like a web browser, and there's a server application, a web server. So clients and servers also depends a lot on the types of, or the, yeah, the app specific application they're running. So application. We got host, we got a host running an application. Now the applications are going to communicate with each other by sending messages. So we might think about here a application that is a web browser connecting to an application that is a web server running on a different host and those two need to communicate by sending messages back and forth. The client application might send a request for a web page and the server might respond with the actual web page. Now, how does that message, the application message, get from the client to the server? Well, we can start with the switches. The switches move that message toward the destination within a subnet. So there's two concepts here you need to understand. Number one is the switch. The switch is the device that's moving the things and a subnet is the collection or the segment or sub part of a network that is sort of governed by those switches. So any part of a network that is connected with switches is considered a subnet, okay? So switches, again, move messages toward the destination within a subnet. And we can see hopefully here the application on the host, the web, what are we calling this one? A web browser is able to use the switches or the switches are what move that message toward the server as they need to go. Now, routers move messages toward a destination across subnets. So we'll have subnets that are sort of a segment of our network. And then the router is sort of the glue that glues those subnets together into a larger network. So again, routers here, we have an application. It moves first through a subnet, then it moves to a router, and then the router moves it to its next subnet. You might think of it here as, for example, my computer at my house. When I'm making a request of a distant computer on the internet, the message first needs to make it through the devices in my house before going on to, for example, onto the Cox network and so on. So routers move a message across subnets. Now there's more vocabulary here too. We need to distinguish very definitely about the access lines and the, the actual physical connections between the devices. An access line is what we call the connection between a host and a switch. In this diagram, it looks more like a desktop, but it's okay to think of this as, you know, a desktop might use an ethernet, or a, not an ethernet cable, sorry, an unshielded twisted pair cable. A host can also use a wireless connection as its access line. So access line is just that first connection from the host 
to the switch or that gets it into the network. Once you're in the network, there's sometimes we need to have connections between switches or between switches and routers. Those we call trunk lines. We call them trunk lines because it's sort of a group of connections. Even though in, you know, in actual practical use, it's not, in the old days, it used to be the sort of group of uh, cables that can, uh, did phone calls. And there might be a hundred different wires inside one of these trunk lines. And they were big and they looked like an elephant's trunk actually covered in gray if you're interested, trunk line. Nowadays for a trunk line we're using an optical fiber and it's even thinner usually than an unshielded twisted pair cable so it hardly looks like a trunk but we still call those a trunk line. Now the final comment here is about multiplexing. Now with a trunk line the understanding nowadays is they're sharing or people are sharing their time on the trunk line or they're sharing the capacity of the trunk line. Multiplexing is what enables a trunk line to do that. So we're simultaneously sh carrying the traffic of multiple conversations on a single trunk line. So we might have host A here talking to host C. Those conversations go through various switches along their way. Host B is also talking to host D and that's apparently on the outer parts of the internet. Again, on the access line, they have those hosts have exclusive use of their own access line but notice when we're going through the switches or between the switches and from the switch to the router that they're sharing or might share the space so multiplexing does that so again watch your vocabulary i'm going to be explaining again the vocabulary once and then i will use it as if you already know it so if you hear a vocabulary word or a three-letter acronym that you don't know before it's time to check your notes, look back, maybe you're going to have to rewind, maybe you're going to have to look at my slides, but you need to be able to use this vocabulary intelligently. So I would suggest also, as you're going, take notes as you go and say the words to yourself. So, you know, I'm saying it, you can say it too if it's a weird word. Sometimes, again, it's a common word, but used in a weird way. Uh, another comment about the vocabulary, don't expect exam questions to just be define this term because this is a little more advanced of a class than that. I mean, you're just a little more advanced than just the basic stuff. You're expected to know what the term means, so you can expect to see exam questions with these terms in them, and that if you don't know what the term means, you're probably not gonna get the question right. So make sure you know your vocabulary. The exam questions will be about how and why the technology is designed and implemented. It's not just gonna be or simply be about whether or not you know the definition. So that was it for definitions and core, or the, some of the basic concepts, and we'll keep moving on through the module.